Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will talk about pulmonary hemorrhage. Pulmonary hemorrhage, also known as pulmonary bleeding, is a serious medical condition in which there is bleeding in the lungs. In this video, we will talk about the causes, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment of pulmonary hemorrhage. So, what are possible causes? Pulmonary hemorrhage can be caused by a number of different factors and can originate from different sites within the lungs. Trauma is a common cause of pulmonary bleeding and it can occur as a result of a serious injury or accident. Infections can also cause pulmonary hemorrhage, particularly in cases of pneumonia, tuberculosis or fungal infections. Autoimmune disorders, such as lupus erythematosus or Wegener's granulomatosis, can also cause pulmonary bleeding. Other causes include blood disorders, certain medications, and environmental toxins. Let's now try to group the causes a little bit more to get a better overview. A bleeding within the lungs can originate from the bronchi. This can be the case in patients with bronchitis, a bronchial carcinoma or pulmonary metastases, bronchiectasis, or if a patient inhaled a foreign body that caused damage to the bronchial blood vessels. Also, the pulmonary parenchyma can bleed. This can be the case in tuberculosis, pneumonia, pulmonary abscesses, or traumatic injury to the lung tissue. The next group is bleeding of vascular origin. This is usually the case when the structure of the blood vessel is altered, as in a vasculitis, the good pasture syndrome, or arteriovenous malformations. Also, pulmonary embolism or pulmonary hypertension can cause injury to the blood vessels. Other causes for pulmonary hemorrhage are DIC, treatment with anticoagulants, or complications of a pulmonary artery catheter. So what are possible symptoms? The symptoms of pulmonary hemorrhage can vary depending on the severity of the bleeding. Some common symptoms include coughing up blood. This is the most common symptom of pulmonary hemorrhage. The amount of blood coughed up can vary from just a small amount to large quantities. Shortness of breath is another common symptom of pulmonary hemorrhage. Patients may feel like they are unable to catch their breath or that they are struggling to breathe. Another symptom is chest pain. Patients with pulmonary hemorrhage may experience chest pain or discomfort, which can be mild or severe. Tarypnea. Patients may experience rapid breathing or hyperventilation, which can be a sign of respiratory distress. Patients with pulmonary hemorrhage also may feel weak or tired due to the strain on their lungs and respiratory system. Patients with severe pulmonary hemorrhage may appear pale or have a bluish tint to their skin due to reduced oxygen levels. And some patients may experience wheezing or a whistling sound when they breathe due to constriction of the airways. How can we diagnose pulmonary hemorrhage? The diagnosis of pulmonary hemorrhage typically involves a combination of medical history, physical examination, imaging tests, and blood tests. About the medical history, the doctor will usually ask the patient for their symptoms, including the severity and duration of the cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, and any other symptoms the patient may be experiencing. The doctor will usually also ask about the medical history including any underlying conditions that may increase the risk of a pulmonary hemorrhage, such as autoimmune disorders, blood disorders, or exposure to environmental toxins. The doctor will then perform a physical exam, including listening to the patient's lungs with a stethoscope, checking the oxygen saturation levels, and examining the skin for any signs of pallor or bluish discoloration. Chest X-rays and CT scans can be used to identify the location and extent of the bleeding in the lungs. These imaging tests can also help the doctor to identify any underlying condition that may be contributing to the bleeding, 
such as infections, tumors or pulmonary embolisms. Blood tests can be used to check for infections, autoimmune disorders and other underlying conditions that may be contributing to the bleeding. These tests may also include coagulation tests to check for any blood clotting disorders. And in some cases, a bronchoscopy may be performed. This involves inserting a flexible tube with a camera on the end into the lungs to visualize the bleeding and collect samples for further testing. Once a diagnosis of pulmonary hemorrhage is made, the underlying cause of the bleeding will be identified and appropriate treatment will be initiated. What are possible treatment options? The treatment of pulmonary hemorrhage depends on the underlying cause of the bleeding. Possible treatment options are First, stabilization. In cases of severe pulmonary hemorrhage, stabilization of the patient may be the first priority. This may involve oxygen therapy, mechanical ventilation or other supportive measures to help the patient to breathe. The second treatment option is medications. Antibiotics may be prescribed to treat infections that may be contributing to the bleeding. Immunosuppressive drugs may be used to treat autoimmune disorders such as lupus or Wegener's granulomatosis. In cases where the patient has lost a significant amount of blood, a blood transfusion may be necessary to replace the lost blood and improve oxygen levels. Another treatment option is bronchial artery embolization. This is a minimally invasive procedure that involves injecting a substance into the blood vessels that supply the lungs in order to block off the bleeding vessels and to stop the bleeding. In rare cases, surgery may be necessary to remove any tumors or other obstructions that may be causing the bleeding. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like our channel, please subscribe. Hopefully see you again in the next video.